Um, hmm, okay, this is weird. Why am I... My webcam isn't working right at this moment in time. Come on. There we go. Um, and now... Why am I not seeing... Continuation. There we go. That was rude. Okay. Uh, welcome back to another Unreal Engine uh, study session. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim, and today um, we're going to be continuing on our sound continuation from uh, two days ago. Um, now, um, we quickly went through the audio files. Um, that was a very really small section overall, and today we're going to be continuing where we left off with the sound attenuation. Um, Blackbird and I got into, you know, a, a discussion, debate, <laughs> at the very end there, and I do want to kind of pick up where we left off with that, uh, to try to address, um, uh, address what was kind of going on. So, uh, I see that Blackheart is in the stage, so let me go ahead and invite him to speak. There we go. I really should probably just give you, like, you know, <laughs> I really should give you, like, full-on uh, permissions to to just speak right away if you wanted to, but I don't know. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, I just want to hop on right into sound attenuation and just get through it as fast as possible. Well, um, I want to try to clear up the mis misunderstanding that we had right at the very end there. Um, Honestly, I really don't care about it anymore. Like I said, I didn't have that much of a great day. And thinking about it, honestly, I could probably waste a of time just comparing, comparing this to real world. We're going to make a game. It's not going to sound like the real world ever. Well, this is just meant to simulate it, not, and I'm not making. I'm not gonna make a realistic game, so I don't care about real war anymore. Well, no, no, as long as it sounds the way uh, we wanted it to sound, good. My 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 point was, you know, the you know, it you know, you're correct in the fact that the you know with the logarithmic, that's it's meant to. Uh, simulate human hearing, you know, and the Doppler effect, okay? So, it, you are correct on that, okay? And I wasn't really debating that, okay? Uh, the the reason why I was trying to say that it was that um, um, the, the problem is, is that uh, when I was trying to say, like, you clear everything out, clear air resistance you clear out um you clear out human hearing um you clear out um energy dispen and and uh dispersion from the audio waves and you wouldn't really have any kind of reduction in in the audio wave you have audio to begin with if there's no air actually well, I mean, you'd still have the sound waves themselves, so... Here's the thing. For there to be sound, there needs to be air. Well, I mean, the sound wave still has energy. So it doesn't matter if, uh, you know... The sound wave may have energy, but if there's no air to generate vibrations in the ear, you won't hear it. But that's my point, is that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm, I'm removing that... The, the ear itself is the logarithmic factor okay uh they they do the logarithmic to um to try to simulate human hearing the best they can it's not it's not perfect right at this moment in time it's it's you know it's a kind of an inaccurate science they've found problems with that system but it's the best that we have right at this moment in time to simulate human hearing right at this point okay yeah. so you know you're right doppler effect and all that you know that does 
take into uh, that does take into place. Okay. Um, now the um, the loudness based off of distance that comes into factor with the um, loss of energy with the sound wave due to air, um, you know, density and so on and so forth. Okay, that that you know dispers dispersion of the energy in the sound wave that you know determines the loudness you know in that case if there was no energy loss whatsoever you'd hear it clear as day you know from from the first time you hear the sound wave to the very end of you know it like coming to you it, it, the 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 level of loudness would not change if it what if there was no energy loss okay so just you know just to let you know about that you know if you're if you're already aware then you're already aware but um but the um so that's that's you know the the idea that i was thinking about was the fact that like if you don't really have a lot of those factors if you don't have the human hearing logarithmic then the, you know the that's that's my that was my point that i was trying to get across but obviously i wasn't you know one i didn't have all the you know it wasn't completely clear about you know the facts that i could present at that particular moment in time to to address it so that's all okay so you know in a in a sense we were both right with just different viewpoints it could uh, would you be fine with that you could you yeah. agree with that yeah okay that's all that's all okay um but yes in terms of you know if we were to make a game and stuff like that and we're you know having human hearing or something like that then most likely yeah we would want to use logarithmic if we want to change things up a little bit and somehow make um you know superhuman hearing or something like that then maybe we would have something that has like linear hearing <laughs> or something along those lines right you know I see it as sort of like an ability of a power up sort of like superman hearing yeah yeah probably you know i'm or you know something you know yeah. um, another use i can think of uh, with logarithmic is like simulating the effect that you hear in some war games when an explosion goes off next to you. And you use it with some kind of timer to make the sound slowly come back and then all of a sudden come back quickly. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, I think they they use the logarithmic for like flashbangs as well. You know, like, um, so, yeah. you know, you have the flashbang next to your ear, you're not only are you blinded but you're also your hearing is like blown out of proportion you can't hear anything that a flashbang is technically an explosive so there is the explosion effect as well yeah yeah you know well yeah um either way <laughs> but yeah the but you know human hearing would be the logarithmic that's that's the closest thing that they can come up with at this particular moment in time i think they're it, yeah it, it, from 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 my understanding from what i read you know i i went into like study afterwards um to look into it more and it's it sounded to me like they're thinking that there might be like um the, the brain can process the signals in, you know, differently, you know, so some people might be able to, um, uh, you know, figure out those sounds faster or, you know, I'm not quite sure how to really explain it. Um, they were saying that the logarithmic didn't really apply for like really low or really high pitches or something along those lines so yeah, they were a wavelength of which a human can hear like below like 20 hertz uh humans cannot hear anything uh higher than i think 
I don't know, for 2,000 or 20,000 hertz, you can't hear anything either. Yeah. And the... But, but they were like on... The, the logarithmic doesn't necessarily work in those particular cases. I believe I believe that's what they were kind of determining in their uh, in their studies. So so it's like okay, you know, it, you know that's obviously there's there's still some problems with the mathematics and the human experience. You know, it it happens. I mean, the math science will continue to progress, and they'll. You know, they may find a better solution later on down the line. You and I, <laughs> probably, <laughs> we're probably not going to touch that kind of math at all. So we'll leave oh, it. Oh no, we'll, that's some. We'll, that math is too much. Yeah, we'll leave it to the uh, stronger minds for that one. Um, you know, I have no problem on on saying eh, probably not. <laughs> you know, hey, maybe. Maybe with what we do, my friend, we might help out in that regard, though. Okay, because let's face it, um, you know, uh, people have used game simulations in real life. You know, there's been studies done on games that have reflected on real life. So that's you know yeah, like that one where you simulate like a plague spreading throughout the planet or some kind of disease. Mm-hmm. World of Warcraft. There's well, it's World of Warcraft, but then there's a game that's in dedicated to solely that. You have a world map and you can see how much of a disease has affected a a particular area and how far it has spread. Yeah. And they use for COVID as well, and they saw a match. Yeah. Well, the the um, they they uh, what what was hilarious was the fact that you know, uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, they they are, they did studies on a particular scenario that happened in World of Warcraft because, um, someone. Yeah, I think I'm out was poison and it spread that poison in a public hub. Yeah, it was it was actually a pet. Yeah, it was on a pet from what I remember. Yeah. So that No 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 it was uh, they they did a raid the 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 like the hunter's pet got uh plagued. Um oh, right, yeah, yeah. they some kind of bird some some sort. Bird, uh, wolf, whatever. I you know, I don't really know. Um and they, you know, they, it was dismissed or something like that. They didn't have it active at that particular moment of time. They brought it out in the middle of the city, and the plague started spreading in the city. And it just started killing everybody in the city, you know, because it just kept on, you know, uh, it kept on plaguing to the NPCs, which, you know, just kept on dying and responding, dying and responding, dying and responding kind of thing. So it never stopped the play just kept on being passed from person to person to person and yeah. i mean they had to shut down the server clear it out you know clear out the plague and bring it right back up again to to fix the problem but that actually led to you know studies about you know play uh, plagues you know uh, disease is being spread, <laughs> and and that kind of thing. So, I think I guess it was comparable to the Black Plague a little bit. Um, to be honest, with you, I, you know, I don't know how much we are familiar. You know, I I know like people have determined the cause of the Black Plague, but I don't know if everybody in if we've. Uh, figured out like the um, you know what what the this you know what like virus it was at that particular moment in time was it just the influenza like a very very deadly you know uh, form of the influenza because I mean let's face it you know the flu virus is still killing off people um, yeah. yeah I don't think they ever found out what it was yeah I don't know if it was ever determined 
like you know what um you know what you know specifically was the main killing force of the black flag and play back then but you know i don't know um but yeah it's it's still you know the fact that they you know that happened in game and it applied to you know uh, people were like going oh that's an interesting thing let's let's look into that a little bit more so will we actually get to that point who knows <laughs> i'm obviously you know you and i we're probably not going to be aiming for anything along those lines but if that was to happen randomly you know without our really knowing then hey we'll, we changed the world and for the better on that one <laughs> so all right uh but yeah that's so we're good with we're good with logarithmic there uh so let's move on here so uh inverse when using this function, the changes in volume are similar to that of the logarithmic curve, but are more exaggerated. This function is good for sounds that are uh, that only need to be uh, just audible at far distances, but that gets significantly louder as the listener gets quite close to the source. So, pretty much the exact same thing as the logarithmic, but more exaggerated for some reason. Um, Steeper. Yeah. Again, it's it's one of those things where it's like I it would really would really love to see like what, um, you know what would really um uh, apply, you know obviously logarithmic would be just be you know standard human hearing, no worries on that, um you know is in you know inverse would you know once again maybe be you know, part of the logarithmic curve, maybe? Or would it be, you know, something else that, like, maybe has a, um, um, well, hmm. Uh, you, can, you can't really hear much, you know, um, the further out it goes, so, hmm. You know, I don't know. Um, I really think of one example of this being used on not real life but on a game i don't remember the name of the game though it was years ago where there was an item that would emit sound but that sound would spike really quickly of course you got to it up until the point that the character actually covered its ears on hmm. its own because it was so loud yeah and take a few steps away and it lowers really fast again Hmm. I wonder. I don't remember what game it was. That was a long time ago. Yeah, not sure. The but the inverse is is kind of an interesting curve. Again, not sure where you know you would really apply it in the real world, but yeah, well. No, I cannot think of a real world example of that one. Yeah, maybe someday we'll we'll you know we'll find we'll see an example where that is useful. So, hey there, Isaac. How you doing? Welcome to the stream. How's your day been? Um, okay, so log reverse. Uh, when using this function, the changes in volume are lesser at close distances, with more dramatic differences at far di uh, dramatic differences at far distances. This function is good for sounds that need to be loud across larger larger distances. Um, so maybe just something like a a huge explosion, maybe like um like a volcano generator that is extremely loud. That or like maybe a volcano erupting, um, True. or maybe um an airport. You know, maybe in you know airport sounds or something like that. Maybe, um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Again, it'd be nice if they had some. This will be determined depending on what sort of sound of sound we want to achieve. Yeah. So, and then we have natural sound, whatever that means. <laughs> 
This function attempts to model a more naturalistic falloff behavior to produce behaviors that closer match reality, which again, it's like, well, <laughs> what's the what? What's the logarithmic supposed to be then? <laughs> um, uh, this function is kind of a middle ground between the logarithmic and inverse functions. So, again, not sure. It's like a mixture of both. I don't know how that would work. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever they're trying to figure out there. Again, you know, it'd be nice for a, um, you know, real life example being given here. But again, whatever. We'll we'll move on. Okay, custom. This allows you to define your own custom function when none of the provided ones gives you uh, give you a required behavior. You can either draw one directly into the curve editor window or assign a pre-existing float curve asset. So, um, okay. Probably really mess with that one too much, not less fully necessary. Yeah. Um, it would be kind of weird to. I mean, if if you were to take like say the linear or something like that, and maybe like maybe put a like a, a curve like right in the middle or something like that, that would be kind of weird. But um, but obviously, you know, you know, we can try to play around with that. If if there's a sound that we're like, boy, it'd be nice if we could do this. Maybe we can like maybe change it around or something like that to. Uh, to kind of work with that, but obviously that would require a lot of manipulation and, you know, it might cause some very interesting sounds, I must say. <laughs> but, mm. all right, attenuation shape. This property defines the shape that is used to define the minimum and maximum attenuation points of the sound. So sphere. This is the default and produces a spherical attenuation shape, which is useful for most spot sounds as it models how sound propagates in the real world. Depending, you know, um, you know, um, you know, normally if you don't have any like restrictions on where the sound can go, then yes, you know, that's typically how sound waves goes out from a point like if if there was like an explosion like this picture is showing then yeah you know sound waves would go off in all directions right so and i and obviously you know it's spherical so you know it's not necessarily a flat circle it's 360 so all right capsule this produces a capsule attenuation shape, a cylinder with rounded ends. This is useful for things like water pipes, where the sound doesn't want to appear to come from a single specific point in space. The sound of gurgling, gurgling water, well, that's, an, that's an interesting word there, uh, would follow the length of the pipe. So, so if you're inside the pipe, you know, you'd be hearing the Russian water, but if you're like outside the pipe, then you might not necessarily hear it. Although, I mean, the pipe itself wouldn't necessarily stop the water from being heard, but, you know, per se, depending on how loud it might be. Eh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, unless you, like, insulate that pipe, like, a lot <laughs> to dampen the sound, then sure, maybe. But, um, like, you know, whenever you flush the toilet, okay, and you're, like, in another part of the house or, like, right underneath the bathroom or something like that, then you would hear the water kind of, you know, rushing through those pipes a little bit, right? So, you you wouldn't necessarily hear the flushing of the toilet or, you know... It, the flushing of the toilet, the sound of the water going through the pipes and stuff like that, 
if if you didn't hear that, it would be complete silence, right? So right. Um, so exact, you know, similar, you know, similar factor there. But at the same time, if you were like inside the pipe itself, then yeah, you'd probably hear it more. <laughs> so. Uh, box. This produces a box attenuation shape. This is useful for things like room tones, ambience, as you define the shape of the box to match that of the room. Um, the the only the only concern that I have with this is that you know they they give you a little like, a little um, um, bottle there of a room. And they show like two different like um, like t two tables or walls like half walls in the room. The you know the you know I just want to point out like you know if you have a sound like right there in the center of the room, then. You know, if you were like sitting behind those those tables, like if you were like hiding down on, in the corner or something like that, then you might not hear as much. Like the sound waves wouldn't necessarily um, hit your ears directly in that particular case. So it all depends on how we configure it. Yeah. Um. So it, it might be muffled, or it might be. It might bounce off the walls, you know. You might have more of a an echo effect than anything else, but um, but it might not be. You know, um, we need to be careful, like with the sound being exactly the same in that regard. You know, if if we want to make you know it really like real life, but uh, again. That depends on the game, so. Okay, cone. This produces a cone attenuation shape. This is useful in situations where you want a directional attenuation pattern, for example, public address speakers. Um, now, um, again, you might have some echo effect. You might have some uh, bleed out in that you still might hear the sounds just not as clearly if you're like behind the speakers you know like um, like if you're behind the speakers and you don't hear any sound whatsoever then those are some very interesting speakers <laughs> you know the, the sounds are really being projected out to the audience and that's it you know that does not go anywhere else which that is, if you can get behind the speakers. Well, I mean, if you were like at a rock concert, for example, right? You know, like if you're if you're like at a, at a concert, you have, you know, on stage you have those speakers facing the audience and stuff like that. And if you're like a technician that's behind it or behind stage, then you know, if those speakers are so well done that you can't even hear them at all then that's some very interesting speakers, I must say, <laughs> you know, um, but more often than not, you, you still hear them. So, um, there's still a little bit of a bleed effect from them, even behind stage. So you just won't get the full force of them. <laughs> so, so I wonder, um, you know, if there's, uh, how they would kind of work on that, you know, obviously, you know, again, that wasn't how we configure it, yeah, indeed. Um, but again, this depends on the game and all that kind of jazz, but I mean, it's still one of those things that we'll need to consider if that ever was, if it, if that ever comes up, so. Okay, so inner shape ideas. Uh, these properties define the inner area of the attenuation shape, the area where the sound will be at maximum volume. In other words, completely unattenuated. 
There are measurements of distance from the origin of sound, uh, source sound in unreal units. This exact property you see depends on which attenuation shape you have chosen. So inner radius, this property defines the inner area of the sphere attenuation shape. Capsule height, half height. This property defines the height of the inner area of the capsule attenuation shape term, and then termed half height as it's measured from the sound's origin, which is at the midpoint of the capsule. Okay. Uh, capsule radius, this property defines the radius of the inner area of the capsule attenuation shape. Okay, so, um, so yeah, the half height is up to the top of the, um, like the cone area of the inner um, cylinder, and the radius, of course, is the cylinder, you know, the radius of the cylinder itself, so, yeah. Um, extents. This property defines the dimensions of the box attenuation shape as measured from the sound's origin. There are three values of this property, x, y, and z. Um, which, we have to be a little careful here, because, um, Whenever I, you know, I, I, you know, based off of, you know, mathematics, graphing, and so on and so forth, um, I've always figured, you know, x of the eh, x is the length and y is the height, but not so much in in 3D space. Um, I've heard it explained that you know people will use. Um, you know, X is surely the, the length. Uh, y is like the distance from the, um, you know, uh, is kind of like, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's like how much distance from you to that point, I guess, you know, and Z would be the height, which is very, very weird. You know, I'm not quite sure why they did it that way. Um, one would figure it would be like the other way around, where, you know, once again, X would be the length, you know, Y would be the height, and Z would be the, you know, direction coming towards or away from you. But, you know, from what I understand, some... I found the engine, but if I remember on the Unreal, Y is still the height. Yeah, I've had it, you know, with certain engines where it's, you know, the other way, where, you know, Z is the height, Y is the, you know, the, you know, position, you know, kind of thing. So it's like, it's, it's weird, you know, again, I don't know why they do it that way, but, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's different um, mathematical computation kind of thing, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, different engines made by different people that are brought up using mathematics differently or in some way. I don't know. Um, okay, so cone radius. This property defines the length of the inner area of the cone attenuation shape as measured from the sound's origin. So... Um, Length of the inner area of the cone, but wait, um, when the hmm, okay, I guess. Okay, I, I see what they're trying to go for in this. So, you know, you have cone angle, which is next, which is the property defines the width in degrees of the inner area of the cone attenuation shape as measured at the center of the cone. Um, you know, by their graphic there, they're basically showing, you know, hey, the radius is, you know, from the point of this, you know, where the sound is occurring from you know, out to the very edge of where the cone, you know, ends. 
um, or at least the inner area of it for the most part. Um, and then you have the cone angle, which is basically the angle from, you know, from the point of interest all the way, you know, uh, determining like, you know, the overall uh, size of the circle at the very end. Um, in a sense, the the cone angle is basically the the radius of the um, you know of the 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 circle at the very end of the cone, right? Um, but it's still one of those you know. Uh, still a little interesting the fact that they they say you know radius going out to it and then they have the angle so but if you consider the if you consider like a cone being like a uh, extension of like a sphere or like you cut as you know you cut like a slice of the sphere out for the cone then it kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, a little bit. I'm, I'm not saying that it's perfect. I'm just saying, you know, I can understand why they would kind of go for, like, radius in that case. Sort of. <laughs> uh, any, like, Comments or questions that you have so far, there, Blackheart? Or that I can think of right now. Okay. Uh, cone fall off angle. This property defines the width in degrees in the outer area of the cone attenuation shape as measured from outside of the cone angle. Okay. Um, so this is even, you know. So. This is the extra area, even outside of the cone. Like how large the outer circle is going to be. So, okay. So if you wanted to have like the full angle of the of like the outside circle, then you'd probably be adding both the fall off angle and the other angle that together to get like the full angle, right? You you get the you know full angle of the outer cone. So uh, cone offset. This property defines the distance directly behind the sound's origin from where you want the cone to start. This is independent from the other properties, so we'll extend the cone backward rather than... Ch My headset just gave out. <sighs> I, I don't... It's, it irritates me sometimes, but oh well. Um, it, it suddenly when like, oh okay, you're you're not hearing anything, so <laughs> you're gonna stop working. God damn it! <laughs> That's right. why I prefer cable headsets. Yeah. Um. I just you know, uh, there are my you know there uh, I I like the wireless because it's um. You know, I can still kind of hear what's kind of being said if I, like, need to use restroom or something like that, right? But, right. you know, but yeah, that, it is indeed annoying. Uh, I hope in the future they they change that, you know, and their later models, they'll have a better, you know, they'll have something better for that. Like you said, it was comfort. Configure it to if you want to go into sleep mode or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you know, if if there's sound coming through the mic, it really should just stay active, you know. But um, if if they can, if it if they do that for later models, that would be fantastic. But um, but I don't know, you know, may, maybe they will. <laughs> Who knows? So. Um, let me, let me redo this because I don't know exactly where I got cut off here. Uh, cone offset, 
This property defines the distance directly behind the sound's origin from where you want the cone to start. This is independent from the other properties, so we'll extend the cone backward rather than shift it backward. So, um, so this is. Okay, um, so I get, I, so I understand why the difference between, um, uh, you know, extending the cone backward versus shifting. If it was just a standard shift, then the size of the cone wouldn't change, right? The angles, the, the radius, that wouldn't necessarily change. However, if you're doing the cone offset, then you're in a sense, you know, increasing the overall area of the cone by that much, right? So in a sense, you're increasing the radius even more. And therefore, because of that, you're also in, a, in uh, increasing the, the angle as well you know, for the, well, maybe, maybe not so much changing the angle. The angle would probably be the same. Uh, it's just the, the overall size of it would just, you know, um, the angle would remain constant, but obviously, um, the size of the overall circle would be larger at that, that end spot. You know, like if you were like standing right at the very end of that cone, um, and you were to change the offset, then the cone would get larger in size, but the angle, the offset wouldn't really change. You're not changing that angle at all because of the offset change. That's it. So. Okay, fall off distance. Property defines the size of the outer area of the attenuation shape. This is the same property regardless of shape and is measured from the edge of the inner area. So, and you know, they don't really go through like explaining it more. They're just basically saying, hey, you know, here's, you know, from the edge of these particular shapes to the outer edge, you know, this is the fall off distance for every single last one of these. You know, sphere, cylinder, um, the the same way cube, comb, yeah, pretty much. So, okay, enable volume attenuation. This property is used to enable or disable the distance based volume attenuation. When true, the sound will attenuate over distance according to the settings defined above. When false, the sound will play at full volume irrespective of the distance between the sound and the listener. So, you know, um, you know, the, uh, what I said before about how like the sound would, uh, would be, would decrease based off of air pressure and loss of energy due to distance, you know, saying false would basically mean that that sound wave stays the same no matter where you are, you know, you could be hundreds of miles away and you would still hear it at the same volume as if you were standing right next to it. So, yeah. um, so maybe you were to do something like that. Like if you wanted to basically say, Hey, um, I want to give everybody the, Oh, here's a, here's a good example, a radio. You know, speaking on a radio, you know, if you're speaking on a radio, you know, people that are like hundreds of miles away will still hear the same volume, you know, through that radio. So, um, so that would be like a perfect um, factor of, you know, saying, hey, no, we pretty much don't really want to use volume attenuation in that particular case. So if we were to put, you know, if we were to say true on a radio, then <laughs> it'd be like, 
you know, uh, you you try to be like, you know, talking with someone like inside a building and going, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of there. And, you know, the, the person inside the building wouldn't hear a thing, right? <laughs> because it's like, you know, too much distance. So, or, you know, too much, you know, um, problems, you know, too many walls or whatever, you know, saying, nope, you can't hear. <laughs> so... Okay. Um, attenuation spectralization. This section defines how the sound will sp spectralize in the game world. You can choose the method of spectralization that best suits your project, as well as experiment with different settings and how for how your sounds will behave as the listener moves around them. Okay. Um, What was spectralization again? I'm not really remembering the definition of the word again. Remember. Yeah, let me look it up. Um... Um, process of causing something to occupy space or assume some of the properties of space. Um, just and give a special form to yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, localize in space. Um, that doesn't really give me much in that regard. Let me look at um, spatial. Let me look at spatial itself. Relating to, occupying, or having a character space of relating to or involved in perception of relationships as as of objects in space. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I found the part that says specialized sound on audio engine overview where it says how the in Unreal handles specialized and non specialized. That's where we read about it. Yeah. Um. Okay, so it's it's all about how sound will how sound is in the the area of effect, I guess. You know, if um you know, like you have you have your world and you're trying to define how the sound will react in said world. Hmm. Here's the case. Which is interesting. Um, not quite sure how this would really change, but let's just move on and let's see what. Well, hmm. We're we're kind of running out of time. Shall we leave this for tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the next part says what enabling specialization will do apparently yeah and hopefully we'll give a little bit more in terms of like the uh, real world examples so but yeah. all right um so we we knocked out you know quite a bit here it feels like you know of course a lot of it was pictures that were like really taking up a lot of the uh, uh space overall but uh, you know we're halfway halfway through the um, this topic so far it looks like so not too doing too bad I think um, yeah but there's a lot of text coming up too not so much uh, pictures <laughs> so that's gonna be a little rough but yeah but we'll get through it.
you know, all about learning the information, right? Right. All right, man. Well, I th that's going to be where we end off. You uh, obviously you want to go and grab yourself something to eat before tonight's tour, area. Yeah? Yep. Yep. Um, for those of you that are maybe wondering, you know, Blackheart and I will be doing Terraria tonight. Uh, I'll be starting off myself with a little bit of single player, you know, just to pass the time. Um, and then we'll be going into multiplayer calamity later on tonight. So look forward to that if, if that interests you. Um, you know. Go check out Blackheart's channel if you're watching me or if you're listening to me on Blackheart's channel. Feel free to stop on by my channel if you want. Um, yep. Link should be down in the description below. Indeed. Um, as a matter of fact, check out all of our descriptions, you know, both Blackheart's and my channels, because all of them are, you know, not only helpful to each of us, you know, Blackheart and myself, but it might be helpful to you, the viewer, as well, you know, um, potentially, you know, and, you know, like Team Robot, you know, Team Robot's meant to try to, like, help everybody on team, for example, or at least that's the kind of, the main general idea of it, so, you know, that's, um, you know, look in the team, look at the description you know, on the application page if you're, if you want to look more into that, so, um, but yeah, that, I think that's going to be it, anything more you want to say there, Blackheart, about this? Not that I can think of right now. Okay. Just want to make sure, you know, if, if there's something else that you wanted to say or, you know, talk about, let me know, obviously. Um, yeah, not at the time. Okay, man. Um, then, uh, we'll go ahead and end it here. So, I'll let you go, so you can, yep, I'll let, let you go so you can, you know, talk to your audience, you know, and say goodbye to them, and yep. I will do the same on mine, so. Uh, see you later, bud. See you in a little bit. Alright, bye. Okay, right. um, going to go ahead and turn off the headset audio, I'm going to, um, and that's going to be it for t uh, today's Unreal study session. Um, I'm glad that we were able to kind of... Um, I'll have to... I, I'd like to maybe talk with Blackheart a little bit later off, off stream because um, I was... It, it sounded like he's dealing with some real life problems in the background. He really did not want to get into any kind of like major debate or discussion. Um, but I mean, it it didn't seem like he was. Maybe he just didn't care. You know, again, I don't know. Um, but, you know, the, the reason why I wanted to kind of address it more was the fact that, um, I mean, if, if we're, if we're going to be dealing, if, you know, if later on, you know, I'm not saying that we're going to be making the, like a real life, um, uh, you know, we're going to be creating like the next like hitman game or something like that i'm not i'm not talking about like we're uh um you know we're gonna be kind of making a um like a first person shooter or something like that that requires really you know well-defined hearing um you know we're probably not gonna get that that like right at the uh, right at the you know right at this very start okay but I'm not going to say that that will never occur. So that's that's why my, you know, I wanted to kind of address it because, you know, the I, I just wanted to make sure that we're kind of all on the same wavelength concerning it. Um, but uh, it, it sounded to me like we were kind of at the same 
understanding at the very end of that, or at least I hope. Um, uh, it sounded to me like I was able to explain enough of what I read, you know, from uh, Saturday's stream to to try to address that a little bit more. Um, but yeah. Um, again, um, you know, not sure, but, well, you know, it seems like it's pretty much like everybody is kind of on the same wavelength. Really, no pun intended on that one, but, you know, um, but still, um, I'm glad that, um, uh, we're both kind of understanding, like, hey, you know, you know, in in a slight, in a slight fashion, we were both correct, basically at that, <laughs> you know. So I'm glad that we were able to kind of resolve that. So um, I didn't want really want that kind of hanging over our heads or anything like that, causing potential issues later on. That's all. Um, you know, um, you know, but, okay, um, so that's going to be it for this Unreal session, uh, thank you very much for watching, I appreciate it, uh, like I said, uh, like I said before, check out Black Arts channel, check out the description, uh, give it a like and subscribe if, uh, this is enjoyable for you, maybe you want to watch some more Unreal, or, you know, maybe if you want to watch any of the other you know, content that, you know, uh, we provide, uh, then check those out, you know, check out the other playlists. Um, but that's it. And that's it. So take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.